Good morning and welcome to Father's Care Online Church Service. I'd like to thank you all for tuning in with us today. And before we begin the service, I'd like to start off with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. The prophet Jeremiah says in the book of Lamentations 3, 22 to 23, that through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. It is made new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. Amen. Now let's just all come together in a spirit of unity and give him all the praise. Now let's just worship him. worship him together this morning. Amen.
just enter that secret place right now where it's just you and I. Father, we just welcome you here and just let your Holy Spirit just take over. Father God, have your way right now with your people. Know that every single person that's walked into this place today, there's a plan and there's a purpose behind it. So Lord, I just pray, Lord, just have your way right now.
Let's open up our hearts unto you right now. Lord, we just pray that you'll just hear our cries right now. Hear our praises, hear our worship, Lord. All this is for you, Lord. All this is for your glory, God. And right now, this moment, we just lift up our praises unto you. finishing off 2020 and slowly thinking about 2021, Lord. It's our prayer, Lord, that as we go into 2021, that you take us to those places where our faith is strengthened. Although sometimes the the crushing and the pressing may be uncomfortable, Lord, but we know that from it, you're bringing that new wine. So Lord, as we worship you right now, we just pray that you have your way with your people. Take me to you. 
standing we will read the word of God welcome to each one of you here to the house of God and uh, who's visiting for the first time I can see some new faces welcome brothers welcome uh, I think a sister at the back come on let's give a warm welcome Father's care side thank you for being here and we welcome all our online audiences and uh, how awesome is the presence of God amen thank you worship team Thank you so much for that wonderful worship. Hallelujah. You ready for the Word? Let's dive right in. If you've got your Bibles, and if you don't, we'll have it on the screen for you. You turn to Colossians chapter 3, verses 23 and 24. We will honour the reading of the Word by standing and reading wherever you are. So Colossians 3, 23 and 24. We ready? Let's read. And whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to man, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance for you serve the Lord Christ. Let's pray. Father, we love You, we honour You. We honour Your presence in this place and we honour Your blood. Even as the Word comes before Your precious people. Lord, I pray, let it be my mouth but Your words. Lord, I pray that minds will be renewed, lives will be transformed, the body of Christ edified and the Name of Jesus glorified. Holy Spirit, take over. Let Your anointing flow in this place, uncompromised, unhindered. All the honour, all the glory and all the praises are Yours, Lord. In Jesus' Name, we pray and ask. And everybody said, Amen, Amen. You may be seated. Before I share the word, just a kind reminder, I believe you all received a text message from Sister Rita that this year we will not be meeting in person for Christmas service, but we will be meeting online. Amen. So Christmas Day, stay at home, be with your loved ones, and uh, we will see you online at 10 o'clock. Amen. So this morning, I have a word for you. I know it is the festive season. It's the Christmas mood. How many of you are in the Christmas mood already? Yes. Amen. But there's about two weeks left of this year to enter into the new year. I don't know about you, but I was counting, and I think including today, it's about 12 days. It's about 12 days. And one of the most used word for 2020 is it has been a unprecedented year. Amen. Like we knew that something new was going to happen, but we had no idea about COVID and what repercussions it will cause, not just here or there, but worldwide. 
and how we use how we have begun to meet for church and a lot of things has changed and so the lord is bringing a word in our midst there new things he wants to do in the midst of god's people where we have to get rid of the old and move on to the new because he's got great plans for each one of us and the church said now i don't know about you but i'm pretty happy to be in the house of god amen so let there be joy let there be smiles how many of you can smile back at me i'm not i'm not stingy in my smile thank you shino at least you're smiling back at me amen come on we serve a living god hallelujah so the lord put this word in my heart to share with you this morning do and live heartily to the lord perhaps there's been things in your life you know you are doing it because you have to do it the place where you are working because you have to work in relationships i have to do this you know god wants to bring us out of that place of have to into a place of i want to come on how many of you'd like that coming out of that zone of i have to do the right thing as opposed to i want to do the right thing amen because let me tell you something it is one of the most liberating way to live one of the most liberating way to live one of the most freest way one can live when you are living in that place of i want to and it is coming from a place of love the lord loves me and i love the lord and i want to come on not because i have to i have to go to church i have to go to work i have to do this otherwise my boss will get angry i have to do this otherwise i won't get a pay rise this year come on it's such a, a way it's such a way to live in bondage isn't it that you are always living for the approval of people that are they applauding me are they liking me are they uh, pleased with me come on yep isn't it tiring isn't it tiring isn't it wearing isn't it like ah oh, it's such a bondage to live like that you're driving and you've just eaten something you throw it out of the window because there's nobody watching oh but i have to because i'll get fined half the things right we do is because out of obligation we don't enjoy it come on after shopping we don't want to take the trolley to the trolley bay come on we want to leave it right in the middle of the car park you smiling because you know you do it <laughs> right we have to come out of that place because in 2020 god wants to take you into some deeper places and he is asking you to come into that place of intimacy into that place of relationship into that place of a revelation of his love for you because nobody can love like he loves you and when that revelation of that love comes you will stop living for the approval and the appraisal of man you will begin to live only for the lord because the lord said it i want to do it because he said to forgive i want to forgive not because i have to oh come on you can do better than that amen that's why many of us don't enjoy our life our personal relationships our marriages our friendships our workplaces our bosses our employees our community because we are living from that place of i have to
Did I get your attention? But the Lord doesn't want that. If you're married today, God wants you to enjoy your marriage. God wants you to enjoy a fulfilled, married, happy life. If you have children, God wants you to enjoy them. Yeah, I know, I'm a mother myself. They don't make us happy every day. My voice goes up and down as well. But you know, sometimes we get so carried away with the obligations that we, stop, we don't even stop to enjoy our life with the Lord, our personal relationships, and even the outer community. Amen? If you read the context of Colossians chapter 3, and if you read from verse 18, it is talking about a Christian home. And you will see, we, we don't have time, we will be going through a few things. We won't have time to read everything, but please, if you're taking notes, do take notes of the Scriptures so you may go home and read for yourself. It's talking about how the wives are to submit to their husbands, husbands are to love their wives, how the children are to obey their uh, parents, how the fathers, the parents are not to provoke their children, the relationship within the Christian home, and also the bond servants obey in all things your masters according to the flesh. Today we don't have bond servants, we have employers and employees. We have businesses and you have clients and customers. And so what the Lord is saying in all contexts of life and relationship, when you're submitting to your husband as a wife, you do it because you love the Lord. Husbands love your wife. You're doing that because I love the Lord and that's the commandment He has given me. Don't love her because she'll get angry. If I don't love her, she'll get angry. Right, dear? <laughs> For many years, when we didn't understand the context of a marriage, it was always about you serve me. You be this for me, then I'll be happy. For many years, it was not about me as a wife submitting to the husband because that's what the Word of God was telling me to do. How can I do it heartily unto the Lord when the Word is not even in my heart? Amen. And that is the area that we will see this morning that it has got to do with our heart because the Bible is saying, do it heartily unto the Lord. Amen. So our relationship that is vertical with the Lord will be reflected with our horizontal relationships, how we treat people. Come on. Amen. What we have with the Lord, the relationship that we have with Him, the intimacy that we have with Him, the heart-to-heart -heart conversation we have with Him will be reflected in our dealings, in our home, in our workplace, in our school, in the outer community. Amen. Agree? But minus that, then God help me how I will treat you. You say one wrong word to me. What will my flesh want to do? Fight back and say two words back to you. And if somebody cuts you in front of the road, God bless them. I know that's what you say, don't you? <laughs> you say so many things in your car, the poor fellow doesn't even know what you're saying. <laughs> right? What am I trying to say today? It's time that we get a heart checkup. Our own heart, a heart in the Bible is interchangeably also used for soul and spirit.
that what's inside of us. Because the Lord has mighty plans for the body of Christ. 2021 is not going to be an ordinary year. It is just not another year that you are to embark on. There is something mighty and powerful and new and deep God wants to do in each one of us and through us. You are not alive for a season such as this for nothing. There is a greater purpose and calling for your life. And that's why God said in the last message to press upwards and fall. Live heartily onto me. Don't worry about anything else. Look onto me. That means everything that you do in this hour, in this day, do it onto me. You doing anything good, whether people praise you or not, whether people have seen you or not, you don't worry. I am watching you 24-7. My son, my daughter, I make a note of that. And your reward is going to come from me. Come on. Amen. So what are some of the reasons or some of the way or things that we struggle with? that we end up pleasing man instead of pleasing God. We will explore some, just few this morning because of time. So firstly, God is more concerned about our heart attitude, the condition of our heart before God than how we appear to people. That's why the Bible says in 1 Samuel 16 verse 7 that God, the Lord does not see as man sees. How does man see? Outside. Tall, handsome, beautiful, lovely, gorgeous, pretty. Mm. But how does God see? He sees the heart. So it's such an assuring message for me. I don't have to compromise. I don't have to prove myself to anything because my heart is naked before Him. According to the world standard, I may not have the qualification. I may not have the beauty. I may not have the background. I may not have the knowledge, but I know my heart is naked before Him. I'm an open book to Him. And as far as I'm concerned, I'm not going to live for the approval of man, but I'm going to live and do heartily unto God. Because God is entrusted in my heart more than the outer appearance. Come on. Amen. So that's what the Lord is saying to us. The Bible says in 1 Kings 8 and verse 39, that only God knows all the hearts. I mean, I can say many things to you to impress you, to flatter you, to, you know, please you. But is that the intents of my heart? Only the Lord knows. Only the Lord knows. Amen. So this morning, God is speaking to us that we are to bring our heart fully open Fully open. And God, this morning we are asking, show us that what is it that's hindering me to come to that place of intimacy where I am living without any, you know, any bondage, any strings, that where I have to be told to do the right thing and then I have to do it. And I hate it. Amen. Amen. Because you'll end up hating it sooner or later. You'll end up hating that place, that person, that work, that relationship, whatever you are in, in this season. And God wants to deliver you out of that place of hate into a love relationship. Amen? So what are the reasons why sometimes we compromise and we begin to please people instead of doing it heartily onto God? The Bible says one of the reasons people compromise is fear of man. Fear of mankind. When I say man, I don't mean like male. I mean mankind of one another. Many relationships 
suffer today because they fear man. They do it because they don't do it in that place of love, but there's this afraid, terrifying fear of doing it, otherwise they'll get angry with me. The Bible says in Proverbs 29 and verse 25, that the fear of man is a snare. Do you know what a snare is? It's a trap that is used to catch animals. And so when we begin to fear one another with an unhealthy fear, it will, the enemy tries to deceive us and ensnares us along the way. And so if I want to hide something from you because I'm fearful of you and I'm gonna, what am I gonna start doing to you? I'm gonna start lying to you or I'm gonna start avoiding you. And eventually I'm gonna start hating you. Come on, because whom you fear, you're gonna hate in that sense. The Lord wants to deliver us today. The Lord wants us to enjoy our life, our relationships, the blessings that He has in store for us. But don't do it out of fear. You know, there's a man called Saul and God gave him a kingdom. And one of the instructions God gave him at once through prophet Samuel was to take all the Amalekites, take them over, don't leave any of the enemies behind, go pursue the enemy of Israel. When Saul goes there, instead of heeding to the instruction of God, he comes back with some plunder, which he was not supposed to. And when prophet Samuel confronts him, this is his response. 1 Samuel 15, 24. Then Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned. He does say, okay, I've done wrong, I've sinned. For I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and your words because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. So Saul thought that he was in a popularity contest. He wanted to please the people that he was leading more than what the Word of the Lord told him to do. And what happened? That fear of man caused Saul the kingdom. Amen. But the fear of the Lord, the Bible says in Proverbs 9 and verse 10, that is the beginning of wisdom. That fear is a healthy, reverential, awe, honouring, respecting, loving fear of the Father God. That fear is a healthy fear. Amen. When we have that, we want to live our life honouring God loving God, because He said it, that's enough for me. Amen? The second reason why we compromise and we begin to do things, you know, just to please people and not heartily onto the Lord, when we make flesh our source, when we make flesh our strength. What do I mean by that? The Bible says in Psalms 20 verse 7, that some trust in? Is it up there? Okay. All right, let's read. So the trust in chariots and horses means that we are trusting the resources of man. that they are our source. So I better do things to please them. Did you get it? That's why the Bible says in Philippians 3 verse 3, have no confidence in the flesh. Your job is not your source. It's hard to say amen to that, isn't it? But 2020 has proven that to many. So if the employer is not there, if the business closed down and that job is not there, who's going to look after you? Where are you going to look to? Right. Because He is your source. You understand? 
He is your source. He will take care of you. If He will feed the birds of the air, why wouldn't He feed you? Why wouldn't He take care of you? Come on. So the reason why we begin to please man is because we begin to trust in each other's strength and resources that you will be my source. You will do this for me. And we miss out on living heartily to the Lord because along the way, we compromise. But David said in Psalm 62 verses 5 to 8, that my expectation is only going to be from the Lord. That only God is my source. Only God is my rock. Only God is my strength. Only God. My expectation, that means my strong confidence that something will happen is only from Him. So that means if every door shuts in the earthly realm, I know that He will still look after me. Come on, church. There's some deeper places we need to go in with our faith. Amen? Just quickly, why we compromise. So thirdly, we don't know our identity as children of God. We are not aware of the power and the position that we have as a child of God. The Bible says in Romans 8, 16 and 17. Have you got that near it? Is it up there? Okay, let's read. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. That means once you've come in Christ, you become a child of God. And once you become a child of God, you become an heir of God. And what does it say? Joint is with Christ. What does that mean for you? That, that means the position, the authority and the power that Christ has is also yours. Hallelujah. That means in Christ Jesus, you are powerful. You have the authority to trample upon every demon under your feet in the name of Jesus. Come on. You don't have to compromise. You don't have to live below the Word of God. You don't have to live below the standard God has for you. You have the power. You have the authority. If anger is trying to get in, get out in Jesus' name. If strife and division is coming in your marriage, in your family, get out of our house, get out of our home. In the name of Jesus, you have no room here. Come on. Amen. If there is a need for a job or finance, my God shall supply all of my needs according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Because the economy of heaven is not affected by the economy of earth. So let's not get carried away by the media. They're only doing what they know to do and we're not judging them for it. But you have a higher authority that can bring heaven's resources to your situation. You don't have to compromise. You don't have to please man. You don't have to undervalue your values. You don't have to apologize for them either. How many times we are shy about it? Come on, amen. You're a powerhouse child of God. We don't, we compromise because we don't know God personally. When we don't know God personally, number four, is because, the, and then there's no revelation of His love for us. The Bible says in Daniel 11, 32, but those who know their God, they shall be strong. That means your strength is coming in knowing God for yourself. Come on. 
When you know God as a personal saviour and a personal relationship, you know, it's just like a friendship or a husband and wife. The more closer you become to one another, the more stronger that relationship, that bond is going to become. Come on. That you know that in bad times, no, she will be here with me. He will be here for me. Come on. You begin to know one another. Amen. And so the Bible tells us of a story of two sisters called Martha and Mary. That's in Luke 10 and verses 38 to 42. You can read it on yourself. The Bible says that, you know, Jesus came to town one day. Luke chapter 10, verse 38. Luke chapter, yep. Now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. Yep. 39. And she had a sister called Mary who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard His Word. Note, where did she sit? Jesus' feet. Yep. Verse 40. But Martha was distracted with much serving. And she approached him and said, Lord, do you not even care that my sister is not helping out? How many times we've had visitors and we're like, Don't say amen to that. (laughs) Right? We become so like, because we are so caring. I used to be like that. When I first got saved, you know, I was doing everything, thinking I'm doing such a great service to God, being distracted, running around, you know. And I'm thinking, why doesn't she do that? Why doesn't he do that? They should help me as well. Right? We become judgmental. We become critical. And then I martyred everything by becoming a martyr. Verse 41. And then it says, so tell her to help me. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, when Jesus takes your name twice, you better pay attention. (laughs) You are worried and troubled about many things. This is a word for somebody this morning. I know it by the Spirit. Perhaps you are troubled and worried about many things in your life today. And like Martha, Perhaps you are distracted from the real goal, real purpose of your life. This is what Jesus is saying to you. Saying, but one thing is needed and Mary has chosen that good part which will not be taken away from her. What was the part that Mary took? She sat at the feet of Jesus. Nobody can ever steal that away from you. The time that you will spend with God, the time that you spend in the Word, the time that you will spend at His feet, the revelation of His heart, the secrets of His heart, the desires of His heart becomes one with yours. And then from that place, when you come out, everything that you do begins to prosper. Why? Because your heart is in sync with Him. And... When you do that, in fact, the work becomes lighter. You are more at rest. You become more effective. You become more productive because the Lord taught me that while spending time with Him. He gave me wisdom. He gave me ideas. He gave me strategies. And you think, whoa, without much effort, it is producing results. You can give God glory for that. Amen. Final thing. You know, when I touched on fear and I feel it's so important because it comes from a place of not having a revelation of God's love for you. This morning, I want someone to know that no matter where you are in life, God loves you. That problem that situation can never separate you from the love of God. The Bible says so in Romans 8, verse 38 and verse 39. It says, Paul said, Paul had gone through so many things. 
you know, you could be in a situation this morning and you're doubting that does God even care? Perhaps you put that situation above God, but God is reminding you that situation is not even big enough. If your sin wasn't big enough to stop me from coming to you, well, that situation is not big enough to, for, to stop me from loving you. Amen. The sin of humanity didn't stop Jesus from coming to this fallen world. His grace and love matters where we are. And this morning, His love is coming to somebody to remind you nothing, nothing, nothing can separate you from the love of God. And knowing that will give you full confidence that I'm not going to compromise my values. I'm not going to be a man pleaser because my Papa loves me. People may not love me, but I know He loves me. And I will live and be heartily onto Him. We begin to put a value to ourselves. You know what the problem today is? And especially in this age of social media, you put a picture and if nobody gave you the likes, what does it do to your self-esteem? They get so many likes, I only got two. They don't like me. They don't like, they like them better. They don't like me. They don't love me. I'm not loved. I'm not desired. And so we become so, so self-centered. And the next thing we begin to get competitive. Social media is good, don't get me wrong. But can I tell you something? Don't put your worth based on the likes that you're getting. Put your value and put your worth on what the Word of God is saying. That never, that never fizzles me. It doesn't matter to me whether you like me or don't like me. I know my Papa loves me. And that's what matters at the end of the day. Why? Because I've been placed on this earth for Him. I am to glorify Him. And like John the Baptist, I cry every day that Jesus, You increase and I decrease. Because the more He increases, hallelujah, you're going to start getting deeper into the Word, closer to Papa's heart and higher in your purposes. Amen. Yes, we are closing now. Also in our giving church, the Bible says, as Neil touched this morning, 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 7. What does it say? Second Corinthians, so let's read. Okay, that means grudgingly or necessity means under constraint or against one's will. You know, God has started a wonderful work in our church here. There are many things we will be doing. And I'm, this is not, I'm not just talking about giving. When we talk about giving, we only relate it with money. But this is to do with your time, with your talent and with your treasure. You know, when we bring that, do we recognise that that time, the time that I have, this breath of life is because of you, Papa. That talent, the gift that I have, is only because of You, Lord. Because the Bible says, He will give us power to create wealth. The Bible says in Romans 12 and verse 3, that grace has been given. Ephesians 4, 7, grace has been given to each one of us. So it's not like we learned this and we know this. It is God who empowered us to learn have the ability to learn, have the ability to create wealth, have the ability to prosper. When we bring our treasure, our tithes, we say, God, out of all that You have given, I've learned so much from King David, you know, in 1 Chronicles 29, you read that chapter on your own when they're about to dedicate the temple and he brings his people, he brings the offering. And this is what King David says, who are we and our people that we can offer so willingly like this? For after all, Lord, out of all that You have given, we give it back to You. <laughs> out of all that You have given, 
You are the one who gave us timber. You are the one who gave this resource. You are the one who gave wisdom. You are the one who's given me this breath. You are the one, the reason why I'm alive today, God. And out of all that you have given me, Papa, I bring it back to you. The life, the children, the marriage, the resource that we have, nothing, nothing, nothing we can boast that it is because I got it. I'm alive only because of you, God. And now I want to live and do heartily unto you. Amen. That's why when you read that chapter, King David prayed for his people and for his son Solomon to have a loyal heart towards God. Because Jesus said, that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Amen. That's why the Bible says, church, Proverbs 4.23, that keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it flows the issues of life. Shall we rise to our feet? <laughs> as I close and as the worship team is here to lead us into worship, into. If this word has come to you as a word in season, at the end, I'd love to pray for you. As every eye is bowed, every head, sorry, every eye is closed, every head is bowed. Let's just worship Lord, tell Him that Lord, I'm done with man pleasing. I'm done with the life of bondage. I want to be the child of God that you've called me to be. I want to be the husband or the wife that you've called, to, called me to be. I want to be that parent or whatever vocation and field you've called. I want to, even in my workplace, Lord, I want to serve my employer as if I'm serving you with all diligence and honesty and sincerity of heart. And I trust Lord that you will reward me, not people. Praise the Lord, everybody. We hope that the Word has touched and transformed your lives. So just before we head out, let's say the declaration together. Please join me as we say this declaration. 2020 is my year of new wine. I am living a surrendered life to God's given vision, wisdom and purpose. I am His vessel, a new wineskin to receive, conceive and give birth to the new He wants to do in and through me. He is enlarging my capacity to receive all that He has in store for me. Jesus, pour this new wine out of me that will draw souls from the four corners of this earth into your kingdom. Teach me to number my days, that I may gain a heart of wisdom. Help me to live, love and serve like you, Jesus, that it is no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. My body is your temple of the Holy Spirit. Not my will, but yours be done. Thank you, Lord, that you have crowned 2020 with your goodness and your path for me is dripping with an overflow of your abundance. 2020 marks a new era a new dimension propelling me to the fulfillment of my destiny. This is my year. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen, Amen. We would love to hear from you. So if you have any prayers or praise reports, please get in contact with us. Details should be on your screen now. And as always, please like, share and subscribe to all our channels and social media. And we'll see you again next week, same time, same place. Stay blessed.